Inside the gym join contract, there are two functions called join and exit that call into the bat contract. The function that it calls is called bat.slip. In this video, we'll start rewriting the bat contract and we'll rewrite the function bat.slip. Inside the MakerDAO DSS repo, I'll start by copying the bat contract. Back inside our code editor, I'll create a new file called cdpengine.sol. And then I'll paste the bat contract into here. First, I'll remove all of these comments. Next, I'll change the Solidity compiler version and also remove this comment. Okay, so this is the back contract and let's first start by looking at the function called slip. Okay, here it is. So in this video, we'll rewrite this function. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the other functions that we're not gonna need in this video. Also remove the state variables that we're not gonna need right now. Okay, so this is our starting point. Notice that we also have this words state variable that was used for authorization. In the previous video, we wrote a contract called alt, and this contract handles the logic for authorization. So back inside our CDP engine contract, we can import this, import alt from lib alt.sol, and then let's rename the back contract to CDP engine is alt. And now we can remove this code that handles authorization since it's already implemented inside the alt contract. Okay, we also don't need this. Remember that this part sets this message sender to be authorized. This is also handled by the alt contract. Next, we have a state variable called live, and this makes sure that this contract can be called when live is set to one. We also implement this contract in the previous video, and you can check over here. The contract is called circuit breaker. The circuit breaker handles sets live equal to true when it is deployed. And the only function that it has is an internal function that sets live equal to false. And it also has a modifier which checks that live is equal to true. So back inside our CDP engine, we don't need this code anymore. All you have to do is let CDP engine inherit from the circuit breaker. So I'll say circuit breaker. CDP engine is circuit breaker. Okay, so now we can rewrite the slip function. Remember that the slip function is a function that modifies the collateral balance that is locked inside the die stablecoin system. So let's rename this function to modify collateral balance. For the inputs, it's gonna take in ILK. Remember in the previous video, I mentioned that ILK is a bytes32 that represents collateral type. In MakerDAO system, we can have multiple collaterals. And this ILK identifies which collateral we're updating the balance for. Let's rename this to call type, short for collateral type. Address user, this will be the user to update the balance of collateral for. So let's rename this to user with a E. And lastly, int 256 WAD. Remember that WAD means one with 18 zeros. Also notice that this data type is int 256. Positive number means that we're adding collateral into the DAI stablecoin system, and a negative number means that this collateral is exiting the DAI stablecoin system, so we deduct the balance. Also notice that this function can only be called by an authorized account. Since the gem join contract will call into the CDP engine, call the function modify collateral balance, this means that the gem join contract must be authorized by the CDP engine to call into this function. If we allow anyone to be able to call this function, then anyone can just put whatever number they want over here and say that they locked collateral even though they did not. So this is why this function must be protected so that only authorized addresses can call into this function. When this function is called, it updates a state variable called gem. And what is this state variable? This state variable is a mapping from collateral type to the address of the user and then to the balance of collateral that they locked. And this last amount, balance of collateral, is in units of WED. Again, WED means one followed by 18 zeros. And inside this function, what it does, it updates the collateral type, the balance of user, by first reading the current collateral balance of user, and then to this, adding WED. Then this add function is an internal function. Since there's going to be other contracts that's gonna add UN256 with int256, let's take this code out and then create a math library. So I'll take it out and then over here, I'll create a library, I'll call this math, then stick this code in. 
And then back over here, we'll call math.add. Add to the current collateral balance of the user, wed. For the last part of the video, let's refactor this part of the code. Now this code is a little bit confusing. If y, which is int, so it can be both positive and negative number, if this is greater than or equal to zero, then it checks that the sum z is also greater than or equal to x. This basically checks that there was no overflow. Otherwise, y would be less than or equal to zero. And in this case, and it would check that the result of adding x with a negative number is less than or equal to x. Now I'm not sure what the behavior of casting int 256 into uint 256 in Solidity compiler version 0.6 will do. But I do know that what this function should do. So I'll ignore this part of the logic for now and rewrite what this function add should do. So I'll say return if y is greater than or equal to zero, then it should return x plus cast y into un 256. Otherwise, if y is less than or equal to zero, then we should do x minus and then cast y into un 256 with negative y. Okay, and that completes the code for the function slip, which we renamed it to modify collateral balance. Let's try compiling this contract. Inside my terminal, I'll type forge build. Okay, and our contract compiled. 